Did he? Oh, I oh he brother, that. brother, it easy. Was, no, it was, it was this one though. Oh, yeah. yeah well, I thought it, at first I thought it was middle finger. Flipped off by a couple of three-year-olds. Okay, um, I haven't thought this through too well. You're mic'd in still? So Gabe just got out of the MRI machine and we had a chance here to look at Gabe's brain, I guess, and to kind of see his brain. But the bigger question and kind of the reason we're here is what if you could actually see what Gabe was thinking about or, or seeing with his own eyes. That's why we're here in Nijmegen to see what that MRI machine can read. And um, it's, it's way, way more than you think. It's, it's pretty scary. We're gonna go meet, what's her name again? My name is Teresa Dado. I am a PhD candidate here at Radboud University Donners Institute in Nijmegen, Netherlands. And in my research, I combine cognitive neuroscience with artificial intelligence. And today I want to show you my results on brain reading. Yeah, that's the question. So what, what did you do? I think I want to start off with if we're sitting here in this room, like light is being reflected from all the stuff here, right? And it falls into our eyes and then it's being transformed into electrical signals and it travels to the back of our brains because that is where the visual cortex is. And it elicits a specific pattern of brain activity, super specific for everything that's going on. So just for the sake of the argument, say that I am looking at a photograph of a person, then that elicits a specific brain pattern. And if I look at another image, another photograph of another person, another pattern is being activated. So what it means is that every unique stimulus leads to a unique pattern of brain activity. Ba back here somewhere. And when I went into the tube in that MRI yes. just a, about an hour ago, you could, you could map out what's going on in my brain on that level where you could redraw what I was thinking about? I can at least measure what your brain response is to a particular image, for example. It could also be sounds, but for the sake of the argument, let's stick to images. So if you look at one image, your brain responds in a particular way. And if you look at another, it's another pattern that lights up, so to say. It's a puzzle, you see? And the goal of my research is to crack it. So I can, I, I can basically understand if, my, if you're looking at my brain, the back of it, and you can, I, I understand how you can see that it lights up in one way for if I'm looking at a picture of a mountain versus a picture of a dog. And you're like, oh, I, we can read these different signals and that's, that's clearly different. And then I can understand if I'm looking at a face versus a house, my brain reacts differently and you can see that. What I don't get is how how could it, like, or the question is really, how good is it at figuring out what kind, you know, what kind of face I'm looking at? That's the question. So I think I'm just going to jump to the results. They're really good. So this is just a figure from the paper we published. I'm going to run you through it, okay? The first column, those are the faces that the people saw in the scanner. They were looking at that. And we had these here. So they were actually looking at these pictures. Exactly. In the stimuli. And this one and this one. That is what they were originally seeing. And then we decoded their brains and reconstructed these images. This is subject one, so our first volunteer. And this is our second volunteer, subject two. And you see that they're a little bit different. Well, okay. So somebody's looking at this guy inside of an MRI. Yes. Right there. And your computers, your artificial intelligence, cannot see this image no. at all. No. They can only see the back of this person's brain looking at it. And, and based on the signals that they decode, that's what is produced? Exactly. Yes. That's almost identical. Right? These, these faces don't exist? No, they do not exist. They do not exist, and that was what was created by the AI. So it doesn't matter, right, whether the face exists or not, only for us, for our methods. But to the participants in the scanner, it looks like a real person. It's just the nature of the stimulus, so that we could do this workaround trick that we did, such that we could decode it. So if I was thinking about a face was I, when I was in that MRI, it would be able to... If you're thinking of a face, you're saying, yeah. or oh, seeing a face. Different. Okay. Oh, is there, there's a difference between that? Yeah, so there's a 
a so lot if of I had been staring at a face when I was in the MRI, I would have been able to draw what I was staring at. Well, I would need to train a model on your brain specifically because the brains of different people are very different, right? Okay. But indeed, when you are looking at a, a face in the MRI, I can decode that and then reconstruct what you're seeing and basically watching with you. But if you were to close your eyes and think very vividly of a face, because of the neural overlap, we're very positive that it will work as well. So you can read my thoughts then? So, yeah, the, 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 the so AI can read my thoughts. How about this? You go in the MRI, we already trained a model on perception of you, and now you go in the MRI and we say, okay, close your eyes and very vividly think of your mom. And then you'll be laying there and then I'll come up to you and show, show a picture and say, is this her? It's yeah. like a magic trick. Yeah. But you're saying, what you're, what you're saying to me here is that that's not quite what you have done in your study, but that is something that you would speculate next, is very, is is that, is very that, possible. Is that the next step? So um, um, there are first some other in-between steps, because right here we have been looking at the participants apart from each other, right? We had two different models because brains are so differently, but I trained the third model where I hyper-aligned the brains and they got a little better. It means that I took the average of the two brains and used that to decode the stimulus. And you see that they're even closer. These are two different people? No, no this, is the, this is the real, the image they saw up top. And then in that next line, that's the reconstructed image based on the average of what the, the participants looked at. So different people. Brain data, the brain, average brain, brain data. data. That's, sorry, like look, I mean, look at this. Look at that similarity, that's him. Okay, so theoretical, we're going theoretical now. Um, there's a criminal act on the streets of a big city, and there are seven eyewitnesses. I'm the police officer. I get, I put all of them into an MRI. Exactly. Visualize who did this, and then you get the average of it, and you've got the criminal, the perpetrator. That's what you would think then, if you indeed start sciencing about what can you do with this. Yes, exactly. And then you would hope you, you. It, it's, it's, it's like a lineup, but then you, get, you're in an MRI scanner and you're not picking between people, you can think of basically anyone. The only thing is that you could lie, of course, and think of someone else. Is that the purpose of this research? No, definitely not. What, what, what is it? So, first of all, what we're really interested in is helping people. So what we wanna do is we wanna restore vision in people who lost it, and we wanna make them see again. So uh, we're right now already like developing these um, like cortical implants, such that if we stimulate them in the right way, that they see perception and they can navigate through the world again, that's one. But if we were to do this, like get better at it and better at it, we need to do this kind of research. We need to understand how the brain works in terms of vision because it's such a hard problem. We were talking about fMRI and uh, fMRI is actually quite noisy. We're very happy with it because it works, it already works super well and it's non-invasive, so we don't have to cut scalps open and everything. But ideally, we want to directly measure and we cannot cut scalps open. But because if we want to help people and uh, make them see again and everything, we got permission to work with monkey data, monkeys who actually have these implants. And we repeated the experiments and the results. This is, by the way, not out yet, so. Um, hold on, hold on. This is a scoop. Hold on, monkey, <laughs> wait, monkeys. What, what kind of monkeys? Cap Capuchin? What are... I don't know. Okay, monkeys. We'll leave it at monkeys. Raises. Monkeys saw the images on top. Yes. And based on the electric signals that you yes. measured in their brains, an artificial intelligence software recreated the faces. So in the beginning, I thought, even with the first hypermodel, I thought maybe I did, I did something wrong because it's so good, right? Maybe I made a mistake somewhere and I'm doing something stupid, but now I got an, a, a different, we used a different GAN and a different data set that I didn't even pre-process myself, but somewhere else they did it. And it works okay. again. But be, I mean, rewind a bit to, the, to where we are now and what, what, what's the next step? What's the next thing you want to do with this? Yeah, what I myself would like to do with the research is go freeform. So right now, restricted to faces, what if you could decode your brain activity into anything, not strictly faces? Really interested in what would happen if we would do that. And then we can talk about things like maybe a dream decoder or um, 
experiences or, or ideas. Would you always be limited to perceptions or could there could it also be thoughts? I see cognitive stimuli? It should be possible. I don't I don't see why not. If the information is in there, it should be able to be decoded, right? If you know how. Yeah. <laughs> really short, yeah. Yeah, just keep it short. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the end of a long day in Nijmegen in the Netherlands. Started with Gabe going in an MRI. That's what I hope. <laughs> oh my god! But <laughs> well, your ears are pressed flat. <laughs> Look at that man. Look at <laughs> Ended with us talking to Tears of Dado about really, really crazy stuff. Yeah. We're done talking about it. And, um,. I'm just gonna have a bitter ball. And if my thoughts could be read right now as I enjoy this bitter ball, what would, what would the machine, what would the artificial intelligence see? A ball, I think. A, a bitter, bitter oh, ball yeah. too. Oh yeah, fried ball. What are your thoughts? That's the question. Uh, SU at DW.com. You can also leave a comment. That's it for today. Da. That's Dutch for bye. Tach? Dach. D-A-A-G.